the stock interface as you get it and it's very straightforward very plain I mean that is a beautiful beautiful color display there is no doubt about it um, and you can configure in terms of battery saving you can see right there that's just gone off you see also this is a little bit of a fingerprint magnet it does come with a screen protector I just hate screen protectors so I threw it off but you're gonna have to keep that clean if that kind of thing bothers you um, one thing you can do in the settings is um, not only assign for instance you could assign a pot like the S, uh, S2 for instance you could assign that or the S1 or whatever you like uh, to adjust the brightness of this and I have uh, actually done that um, here I can control all this is probably a little hard to, to show you with a camera that's going to adjust to me adjusting the brightness but yeah you can see it getting brighter there and then my camera adjusting so I've got the brightness set um, to actually work on one of these and then I've also set it to time out um, so that it will save battery and then also you can tell it when I'm moving the sticks don't turn that on I only want that screen on if I press one of the keys down here so there's some intelligence there that's gone into uh, battery conservation which is really nice to see so you've got kind of four categories here uh, model telemetry system and return if we go into system you can see here we have uh, model select Time display, sound, um, let's have a look at a couple of these. So yeah, if you've got a SD card in there, you can start filling these up pretty straightforward. And then it does show you how many pages of pages you have here. So one of one, so you always know where you are. That's quite a nice thing. Uh, if we go to the time, you can set your time date and uh, the way round you like it, depending on where, where you are. Um, if we go to display, you can see here, I've got brightness set to a pot uh, and the S2 switch and then I've got it to sleep at 30 seconds but obviously you can decide exactly uh, how long you want that and then wake up you can have from a key press the stick or uh, key and stick so yeah it's quite nice uh, that that works I've set it just the key in the interest of saving battery um, if we go back from here we go across to sound um, now what I've done here again is you can decide which of these things key alarm and trim adjustment you can set the amount of haptic feedback whether you want it to be strong or soft you can choose whether there is haptic feedback or not so when I press a key I don't want it vibrating every time so I've unticked it there um, and then yeah you can mess around with this as well no pot or pot it's uh, it's pretty intuitive all of this to be honest with you um, if we go to battery you can configure this depending on what type of battery you want to run in there um, what else we got stick calibration uh, obviously we can do that um, pretty straightforward shows you uh, how things are working there uh, stick direction um, you can change those things there that's quite interesting uh, update uh, I guess this is for updating the firmware 6R wing type mounting type okay info there is our software version so a couple of uh, system things there if we go from here to the telemetry page you can see you have some quite nice useful things like the uh, SWR RSSI receiver battery um, and then you can press the page button to go across <clears throat> and have a look at a whole bunch of different versions of that um, yeah it's it's really it's very simple there aren't millions of options but it's 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 nicely laid out this there's been some thought put into this and it um, it seems pretty good to me let's return from that um, and then in the model uh, if you go to the model setting here you can see we've got three pages um, and there's quite a lot of stuff here <coughs> excuse me if we go um, back to that oops first page you can see things like setting up uh, things like your endpoints pretty straightforward easy to do um, the things like OpenTX will actually show you which which uh, stick is moving when I, I prefer things like that again why, why I'm going to move to OpenTX but it's laid out in a nice easy way um, so no problem with that sub trim adjustment for each channel nice and easy uh, trim setup probably how many steps you want yeah so two steps for trimming if you use trims we generally don't uh, fail safe you can set up your fail safes here that's nice and straightforward uh, set it to hold or what else have we got other than hold custom no pulse um, let's keep going through logical switches now that's a really cool thing they've actually put logical switches here um, which is something I wasn't expecting to see I thought that would definitely be something I'd only be 
getting on the OpenTX uh, software for this, but it's in there. Um, and it does look like you can, if you go edit, there you go, operation, you can choose uh, less than, uh, equals, more than, uh, and functionality. So it's all the things we're used to on uh, OpenTX, so that's cool. Your source, uh, and again, if you press it and, and flick the switch you want, uh, have I done that? Uh, so, oh no, sorry, I'm being stupid. So yeah, if we go to switch, and then we go to source, then, yeah, as soon as you move the switch, it will then uh, automatically select it for you. Again, very reminiscent of an open uh, TX kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that's that's a really cool thing that they've um, added that in. Um, you've got your curves, custom curves here. That looks nice and, nice and easy to edit. And then you can see if I adjust the exponential of that, you can see that adjusted in the curve. So yeah, that's all very pretty and very nice and easy to use. Special functions, again, very similar to the OpenTX thing. Um, and you can set up whether you want it to do something like play track or, or whatever it is you want it to do. Actually, I wonder if play track's an option. Maybe not. Um, but yeah, it's gonna do most of the things that you're gonna want to do. Uh, telemetry setup stuff, uh, general. Skip startup sound skip splash screen, um, skip shutdown confirmation. Now that's kind of a welcome thing. I know on the QX7 some people got really annoyed that you had to hold the power button down for four seconds to turn it off and it's the same deal with this. You gotta hold it down, you get a confirmation. Are you sure you wanna turn it off and then enter? So it's one more step, <clears throat> which is kind of annoying. So it's good that you can skip that. Um, you got low battery warnings, skip throttle warning. Um, yeah, so that's that's a nice little feature. Um, good job on that. Switch warnings, that's also very welcome. You can turn them uh, turn them off by uh, skipping a throttle warning, uh, which is probably the one you don't want to skip, but um, certainly in terms of switch positions, um, you could uh, skip any of those if you want once that's set up. Uh, there you um, there's the trainer port, and you can choose cable, wireless, obviously, if we want to use that Bluetooth module. Um, and then you set this for the master or the slave. Um, yeah, and then decide what your switch is. And I presume, can I do, yeah, there you go. You can actually decide what you want that to be as well. Um, so yeah, that's very, very cool. No complaints there. And then telemetry calibration screen as well. Um, so there is a lot, a lot to look at here. What's on the next page? Input map, output map. Uh, flight mode, throttle curves, throttle holds, and then a bunch of airplane stuff. Uh, let's page across one more. Uh, snap roll. Uh, yeah, this is a lot of uh, a lot of plane stuff. Um, so I guess when we select model for quadcopter, a lot of that stuff will probably disappear because that's not anything that we need. Uh, in terms of setting up things like the timer, let's see how that's done. Uh, yeah, you can choose whether you want it to count up or down. So we do down. You can set your alarm time. Say alarm 30 seconds. Uh, set our sound to a beep. Oh, can you do a voice? Yes, speech. Um, and then start. Uh, can you actually... Yeah, you can do the switch. So let's say start switch. No, let's do it on this guy. Let's say switch mid up here. Um, and then we can say reset to that position and then let's return and see if that works. So if I now flick uh, this guy to the middle position, that started. <coughs> and then if I go to the next position, that resets it. So yeah, that's pretty straightforward setup. Yeah, I think it's pretty intuitive to be honest with you. It's, uh, you know, first look at it, a quick uh, peruse of the menu, that seems very easy. So finally on to the bit that I was most excited about, which is getting OpenTX on here. As I said, FROS, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's got some nice little features, um, but this is what I wanted to get on here because as I've mentioned already, uh, OpenTX is just like a fine wine. It's got better and better with age. Um, so I was really keen to get it on here. So let's go ahead and turn this on and see what we're presented with. Welcome to OpenTX. 
Now, straight away, you're gonna get confronted with this. If you are running, and I'm pretty sure you can only get a nightly build for this at the minute, but I've gone for the latest nightly build for this. Now, although that can be a little bit of a scary thing, I will say this, they haven't started completely from scratch with this. Although there is some new hardware in here, this is mainly built up off of the X12, which has been in the wild for quite some time. Uh, so a lot of the functionality is exactly the same. Everything works really well. And coming from the X9D, it took me minutes to get my head around how all this works. In fact, it even felt a little bit easier because you have so much less uh, vertical scrolling to do with uh, such a big display on here and so much more to see. So you'll have to dismiss that warning. Engines disarmed. And then this is what OpenTX looks like on the X10. Um, now you'll see one of the nice new features is the fact that you can put your own model images on here and it's a very straightforward JPEG. I've gone for something, I think the ones that are on there tend to sit around 200 pixels wide, but I haven't had to be too specific um, and that has worked out perfectly. That's a really good thing, especially for someone like me who's reviewing a lot of quadcopters. Sometimes you forget what the names of all these are, so actually having a, a picture of it's a great thing, and it looks great. I mean, come on, we can be a bit shallow about this. It's just really nice to look at. You have this, uh, again, really nice display. The colors are nice and bright and beautiful. You can do a lot of customizing here. Obviously, we have a lot more screen real estate, so you get, as well as the trims, you get the sliders on here as well, um, and what the S knobs are doing etc etc and even down here you can see we have a readout for the six position switch which is also pretty nice now in terms of what you do with this uh, screen space or this uh, screen space real estate you uh, you basically have widgets so I'll tell you what we'll just look straight away at that now on this one you hold down the telemetry side of this uh, button here and this will allow us to look at how we want things laid out and you can see there are actually some window options you can go for one thing in the middle the display layout that I've gone for here with uh, kind of two sections on the left and then one display for a nice big picture you can divide it like that um, you can see there's quite a few different ways of laying this out and you can make as many pages as you want um, if I then go to set up widget widgets you can see uh, the kind of things you can mess with so for me uh, for instance here I've got the um, uh, so if I want to remove the widget and I want to start again I can have things like the uh, channel outputs um, which is nice if you want to have that on screen you can see I've actually gone for that just uh, for the main four down in the corner here um, you can choose uh, one particular thing we'll, we'll have a little look at that in a minute um, the model image uh, a label uh, you can have like a bar value of whatever you want the timer um, battery check um, a counter there's there's kind of a bunch of different things things you can mess around with and I guess those widgets are going to keep getting added and, and more things will develop on that front so I, I really like the way that works. Uh, in terms of how the timer looks I've just set up a simple timer here and if I start it timer on. you'll see your timer going uh, going down and you also get a graphical display as that timer goes down this bar will actually fill up in a circle. Obviously it's just fancy graphic stuff but it's nice to see these uh, little things being taken advantage of. Reset. Um, and then we also have this um, kind of uh, widget space for four windows up at the top here. So for instance, you could have your RSSI value up here, you could have your RX battery voltage, you could have um, some of your minimums if you want those up here. You can choose whatever you want. And then of course you can have whole other pages as well. So you can really spread this stuff out. You can either have loads of information on this screen or just the bare minimums and spread it out across pages. You also have here uh, the battery voltage for the internal battery. Uh, and then we have the speaker volume, which is that icon on top. Now I've got that as a global uh, global function uh, bound to the S1 rotary dial. So I have my, I can actually show you that. But. Engines are engines armed, engines disarmed. So yeah, that's very, very straightforward to do. And then you can see in red here, obviously that would fill up with white when we actually have um, telemetry, we have that signal. And then you've also got the date and time up in the corner. So in terms of the model options, if I hold down the model uh, page there, uh, or the button, you'll see this is how things are laid out. Again, super familiar to the X9D. We've just got more space for things to be laid out. And in fact, they've kind of done it in a tab section at the top here. So as you page across here, 
um, you'll see all our options here for, for how we look at things. This is quite nice seeing the tabs like that. So you've got your inputs, your mixer, and another cool feature here, look, you can actually see what's happening on the input and the output or at the mixer and the output. So if you wanna start messing around with weights and all those kind of things, you can see directly how those two things change. So that's a really cool thing. Um, and then of course we go across to the outputs here. Uh, from here, you can then enter that and set up your sub trim and then your endpoints. Uh, it's all you know exactly what we expect to see but again it's just nice to have so much of it on one page um, if we go across from there you've got your curves that you can set up nice and easy to go through again very similar but just nice to have this all in one place uh, let's go across from there global variables uh, logical switches again one big advantage that OpenTX has over the FROS is the fact that you have 64 logical switches I mean that's just more than you could eat, um, whereas I think you're limited to eight on FROS. Uh, and a quick example of, of using logical switches, just because it's fun to do, uh, they're kind of an internal uh, switch, if you like. We could go here and we could change this to, uh, I've got a video on setting up some logical switch ideas, but let's just do a quick one. A less than X, let's go and change, let's go for maybe that timer, uh, just to show an example of how it works. Uh, where's timer? Let's keep going, it's here somewhere. There we go, timer one. So we can say when timer one, which is your A figure, uh, when uh, this set time is uh, less, when A is less than X, so if we set this time to, I think I've got a four minute timer on here, so let's set that to uh, three minutes 50, just so we get to hear it or see it do something nice and quick quickly. Uh, so yeah, when uh, timer one is less than three minutes 50, that logical switch will trigger and I can check that by turning on my timer. timer on. And we should have in the space of 10 seconds as that counts down to get to three minute 50, we should see logical switch one uh, go bold as it triggers. There you go, so that just went bold. So there you go, we've now got an internal uh, logical switch happening that we've set up to our preference. I could then go over to, um, let's go out of there, let's go across to the special functions. You can see I've got some set up here already. And then I could literally now choose that um, logical switch. There it is, logical switch one. So when logical switch one is triggered, I can say play a track. Uh, and then from the, I've installed the amber pack on here. I'm sure you all know about that. So I've got that lovely amber voice. Let's say, uh, what can we go for? Um, time to land, let's go for that one. So with that, that one done reset. let's reset this timer Time i now turn on. my timer on when we get to 10 seconds in logical switch one will trigger and therefore the special function will mean that should sound it is time for you to land. There you go. So there's a quick example of how much fun Reset. you can have with logical switches and special functions. Yeah, there's just so much fun to be had here. But yeah, again, just love how easy it is to see all this. Um, we go across from there, we got our custom scripts now. Um, the nightly build of the SD card does come with the Crossfire Lua script. Um, I can actually go quickly and show you that. Um, if we hold down system. Uh, we've got all our normal radio setup stuff. Uh, I'll come back to that in just a sec, but if we page across, I've gone too far, there we go. There's the Crossfire folder, and from here you can enter the Crossfire Lua. I've checked that, it all works. I'm getting telemetry, everything's working fine, no whinging. I still have to do some more finding out as to whether, um, where the baud rate sits, board rate, sorry, I know some of you get upset with that. Um, but so far that seems to be working fine to my knowledge. Um, so yeah, the Lua script stuff seems to work absolutely fine fine. Um, we've got global functions here. Um, as I said, I set my S1 for the volume control, uh, but you can have whatever global functions you want across all your models. Uh, you've got your trainer port, channel configuration, uh, set that up as you like, obviously, um, and that'll be using the Bluetooth module if you prefer, because there's one built in, as I've mentioned. Uh, stick calibration, etc., and your pots and switches, all that goodness. And then across to the last page, you've got the version info. So you can see here, I'm running one as of the 5th of the 11th, 2017, and it's nightly build 427. Everything working really well. Um, so that is that. Um, did I cover, let's go across to the last page. Yeah, you've also got on that last of the model page, you've got the telemetry, uh, discover new sensors, all the stuff we're used to on that last page. Um, 
of the uh, X9D, exactly the same kind of thing going on there. Um, and then you've also got, let me just go to model setup as well here, you do have, although I think this will need changing, um, with the internal module, there you go, antenna selection, internal. Now, um, if you tried to change that from the internal diversity antennas that are in here to the external screw-on antenna, let's try and change that. It gives you a warning, which I think is really smart, that it says, make sure antenna is installed, enter or return. Uh, and I don't actually have the antenna in there, so I'm not going to do it. But the minute when you do, it says internal plus external, uh, which I know this is, I'm pretty sure this isn't set up to do. It's the external or the internal, not all three. But um, of course, the X12 does use all three. So I think that's probably something that they're going to, uh, that will be a software thing that they'll change in one of the nightly builds. Or maybe I'm wrong and it uses, it can use all three. Uh, I just don't know the answer to that right now. Um, but yeah, all those little detail things are there and quite nice and easy to use. Um, if you also press the model button one more time, you can see we've got a nice color display for all our um, all our channels and bits and bobs. I think if we... Engines yeah, there you go. You've got some switch stuff disarmed. going on there as well. All the switches I've got laid up. And then if you page across, it just goes through to the others. And then right at the end here, we've got a logical switch monitor, which is cool as well if I did that same thing of turning on the way we've got that logical switch come on. That will... Uh, that will come on at 10 seconds as we test it, etc. It's nice to be able to do that too. And you can see it gives you a little summary of the logical switch as you highlight between them. So yeah, I just really like, this is ever so familiar. It's something you'd pick up and get used to really quickly because we know how, we understand how this works. As I said, it took me minutes to get my head around this, but I love the versatility and the screen real estate. You know, you've got so much space there to play with. You can put all these widgets up the top. You've got four up the top there. You've got plenty to play with here. Make as many pages as you like it just works wonderfully so this is what's going to be staying on here in terms of flashing this now it's done in a very different way there's no holding trim tabs in or whoops trim center trim center let's not do that um, in terms of holding trims the trim tabs in and pressing the power on there, there's none of that you turn this off an open TX is actually installed to the SD card um, it doesn't use the internal flash storage to my knowledge um, that is uh, it's done this way now what you have to do is put the SD card contents on the SD card as you would, as you'd expect to do. But then you've got to make sure that the SD is installed and then you've got to make sure everything is powered off and then you plug in via the USB on the back with everything off uh, which is kind of like a DFU mode for this and then you flash using the uh, OpenTX companion again the nightly build uh, making sure you've got everything set up I will at some point go over a setup video uh, for doing this and for flashing obviously this has a USB-C on the corner here but that is purely for charging it has nothing to do with connectivity do not plug anything else other than the external charger in. And I know this is a gripe for some of you. I've seen complaints about it. Look, this really doesn't bother me, uh, to be honest with you. That's just the way this charges. They chose to externalize it because it does get hot. But the reason it gets hot is because it charges so damn fast. I mean, this really does charge in absolutely no time compared to how long, you know, most of us are leaving our uh, TXs overnight if they're flat on the X9D to get a lie on pack charged up. Um, different case if you've got um, a LiPo in there. Um, but you know, in terms of this lion, this this thing charges super fast. So I've I've really no complaints about it. If you're worried about losing this, well, just you know, hot glue the thing in. It's non-permanent and it will stop you losing this. Just that whole thing with the charger goes in the drawer and it comes out the drawer to charge. It doesn't bother me. I don't really see uh, why there's been so much fuss over that. And they've kept the heat outside the transmitter because that's obviously a good safety thing anyway. So really, it doesn't bother me whatsoever. Um, so all in all, here are my impressions and opinions. I really, really like this transmitter. I think, as I've said before, if you haven't already gone nuts with your X9D and done all the upgrading, this guy has all those things that you're you're missing. I guess the only thing I could criticize is the speaker isn't quite as nice and deep and rich as the upgraded uh, five watt speaker, or was it two watt, I can't remember, that I put into my X9D, which does sound really full bodied and lovely, you know, but this um, sounds more like the stock speaker, but it's plenty loud enough 
Other than that, the S3 switch that's in here, um, the uh, six, posi six position switch, sorry. Um, the fact that you've got the uh, M10s, which essentially, you know, they're proper nice hall sensor gimbals, love those. And that's why I went for this over the S, as I mentioned in the previous video. Um, it's, it's just got some a beautiful premium feel to it. It's got the controls that we like. It's running on a great bit of software with OpenTX, you know, high, high recommendation for that. And uh, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm certainly going to be making the switch. I do love my uh, X9D and I put a lot of love into modifying that and custom painting it and everything. But I will now be switching to this and giving it a real go. For those of you that do want to know more about the Crossfire side of things, I will look into it. I have done, obviously, a pretty big Crossfire video on setting up the Micro Crossfire, Micro uh, V2 receiver and micro TX on the X9D. I have got it installed on this guy um, and so far everything has been working absolutely fine for me but I need to do some more testing before I'm going to sign it off. But yeah, so far I'm going to be moving over to this and I'm going to be moving forward from here. Do I like this transmitter? Do I recommend it? Absolutely. I think it's a really nice piece of kit. So if you're looking for something in that slightly more premium uh, area, then absolutely worth your consideration. As always, links are in the description. If you guys have got any uh, questions, please put them in the uh, comment section. And you know I'm really hot on trying to reply to all of you. I really do try my best. So uh, yeah, drop, uh, drop any questions in there and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching guys, lots more coming up, bear with me and I shall see you all soon, cheers.